But you had a question yeah, for us today. Yeah, uh, you've made you've made uh, morality uh, the way you explain it to me. I think people overcomplicate it. It's very easy. I won't beat that dead horse because you've talked about it a lot. Where um, so the weak atheism versus strong atheism. Um, prior to listening to your show and really getting into my quote atheism, um, I used to intuitively the way I would argue the point when somebody would say, well, how do you know there's no God? Uh, my my reaction would be, you can't really prove a negative. I just knew um, intuitively that it, was, it wasn't really on me to kind of prove it, but the way you explained that is really good. There's just some gray area there. Um, by the way, you, 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 by, go ahead. by the way, you can in fact prove a negative. You can prove lots you, of negatives. Yes. But go ahead. I remember a show where you talked about I remember a show where you talked about that. I'm like, actually, that's true. Um, but but I don't want to get into that. But um, so basically the gumball analogy where basically somebody postulates there's an even number of gumballs. They don't have a good reason for that. Do you believe them? No. But you don't necessarily believe that they're odd, that's odd either. Well, in that situation, I'm in the position where I know for a fact there's a, a statistically a 50% chance that it's either even or odd. So I at least know it's 50-50. So I was having this discussion with a theist, and he threw at me something that I thought was an actually a, a good point because I brought up, you know, I'm an, let's say I'm an a leprechaunist. You know, um, I, is it on me to prove that there's no leprechaun? So he he said, well. Do you, do you, is it that you don't believe in leprechauns or like most people, do you believe there are no leprechauns? And intuitively, I feel like I really do believe there's no leprechauns. And if somebody were to tell me, hey, there's um, somewhere on Earth is an invisible magic dragon flying around. Not only do I not believe that, I, I believe it's not true. Although I do acknowledge I don't have a way to know it's not true. So the, you, you might understand that where I'm kind of going with it. Go ahead. You you might actually I'm sorry. So knowledge doesn't require certainty. It's just you know, in right. in in philosophical terms, it'd be a justified true belief. And we, whether or not we can get to truth is is something separate. But you might. So the, here's the the weak atheism, strong atheism. For those who are confused, um, weak atheism is I am not convinced there's a god, and strong atheism is I'm convinced there is no god. It is there are different things. It's a philosophical distinction. I largely don't care. Uh, what label you put on yourself. Uh, my problems become with people, you know, you said something, and I don't think that you were necessarily wrong but when you were talking about the gumball example where you said you know it's 50-50. Uh, um, you know that there's only two options, but that doesn't mean that it's actually 50-50. Uh, th th there's not enough information in the gumball analogy uh, because it could be the sort of thing where because of the size of the, of the jar, you could only get an odd number in there or something like that. Um, sure. Th that, that's just kind of nitpicking. I want to I get to whatever your question is, and, and we'll let Jeff uh, have a shot at it here. Um, okay, 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 sure. So um, one, thing, one thing I've been convinced of is not to trust intuition, is, is to go purely with epistemology, and I haven't studied it to the level that you have. And so I feel like if... It, Intuitively, if somebody, well, one, whether or not a god exists, there's no good reason to believe that. The invisible magic dragon, we can go down the list of all the ridiculous hypotheticals that are out there. Even though I have absolutely no way to falsify them, right. rational, my, rational, my, my rational mind tells me you, you cannot falsify them, so there's, you can't, there's no reason to believe it's not true. You just don't have a reason to believe it is true, but... My intuitive, my gut, I guess you can call it, says that I really believe there are no magic dragons flying around Earth somewhere. You, 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 you kind of get the point I'm making with that. So how do I reconcile the two, the intuitive me and the rational me? And, you know, because I, I really do want my, my intuition or my beliefs, to my emotional beliefs to match my, uh, my rational mind, if that makes sense. Sure, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I would want anybody to have their their rational uh, conclusions match their uh, match their beliefs. And I think um, you know part of the difficulty is all too often, um, all too often you can have um, someone say, you know, I'm a uh, I believe that there are no gods. Um, versus I believe that uh, what I say, I'm a strong atheist with regard to every God claim that anyone has brought to me. Um, 
because inevitably in every one of those interactions, there has been something in the definition of the God that they are presenting that necessitates they, that, that the God is not real. Um, either, well, either within the definition or placing that definition in reality. Um, so I think um, th- that for me, the best way to rectify those is, um, you know, to explore the um, claims that are being brought to your attention um, and uh, and... As fully as you can, so that you can conclude whether or not it's possible or or not possible, because, um, like I said, in every 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 God claim that's been brought to me, once I've explored it with the person making the claim, at least the version they're describing to me is not something that could exist. Yeah. Um, this is this is a. I'm, there's. There's whistling in the background. There is. Um, Actually, the so the um, the invisible magic dragon. Presumably, the invisible magic dragon does things, and you would be able to see the results of it and test the existence of the invisible magic dragon, even if it's invisible and magic. Um, you know. Otherwise, you're detecting the undetectable. Right. There has to be something about it that's detectable. Right. So, so the goal of skepticism is to in the language that you were using, essentially, get your intuitions to match up with your rational thought, uh, to train yourself so that your BS detector um, is tuned. Now, the, I, wouldn't get too, I wouldn't get too hung up on the notion of falsifiability uh, because it, while, while it is essential, um, falsifiability is essentially about, for lack of a better way to phrase it, absolute disconfirmation of something. There would be something that would show that this absolutely is not the case. But that doesn't, it doesn't change whether or not we can be reasonably confident. So this is about adjusting our confidence level. I'm an atheist, and by that I mean I'm a non-theist. I am not convinced that a God exists. I am also a weak atheist. I am also a strong atheist in the same way that Jeff is with respect to the gods that I've been presented with. I can't I don't hold a position about gods that I've never been presented with for the same reason I don't hold positions on any concept that I've never evaluated. But there is a reason why I can be uh, reasonably confident that none of the gods that people have put forward actually exist. Not just I don't believe them, but I believe they don't exist. And you could go with a simple kind of uh, probability argument. Uh, each one of the buildings in this picture will, will call them a god. And we, and they're all mutually exclusive. So only one of them can be the true God, if any. And if they are in a position where I can't tell which one of those could be a God, and it's still a possibility that none of them could be, that fundamentally changes the odds. It's not like there's, you know, 10 buildings here, so they each have a 10% shot. Uh, One of them is a God and none of the rest are. So they all have a 90% chance of being wrong. And because I can't tell right. which of them is the one that isn't, then I have to consider them equally, give them all a 90% chance of being wrong. And this is an oversimplification because not all gods are equally ridiculous. Some of them are, you know, if you say that, well, there's a god who, uh, uh, whose very existence makes it possible for human beings to flap their arms and fly to the moon. Well, clearly that God doesn't exist by definition because it's, it is contradicted by the, the actual facts that we can't flap our arms and fly to the moon. Uh, sure. we, we can flap our arms and direct people to create a spaceship that will fly us to the moon. Uh, so that's probably how an apologist would <laughs> and re- reinterpret that. At the end of the day, if you're convinced that there aren't any gods, here's the secret that doesn't in any way change the fact that anyone who is asserting that a God exists has a burden of proof. Yeah. Your inability yeah. to disprove a God, a particular God, like I can't, I can't disprove this one. I can make a, a broad argument about the possibilities, but I can't disprove this one because you've presented me with an untestable, unfalsifiable proposition. Does not mean I am irrational to think that that is not God. Right. It sounds like the uh, the answer might be from from what you said as far as apportioning your beliefs, because uh, I think maybe I was thinking of it um, too black and white as far as 
I believe X is not true or I don't believe X is true, um, that there's scaling involved. Yeah. The, your, your claim is your claim is very large. There isn't a shred of evidence. And by, I know, by the way, your claim would involve violating natural laws that we, we you understand universally apply to everything. And, there, so, and if your claim was true, there would be evidence for it. It's, you know, if somebody says, oh, Matt's got a so, dead body in his trunk, and we go out and look at my trunk, and there's no dead body, and there's no hair and fiber evidence that there ever was a dead body, then we have essentially proven that that claim is as not true as we can get to. Yeah. So okay. don't get, don't get yeah. too hung up on the fact that it's entirely possible to have a reasoned belief that you right. cannot demonstrate to a certainty. And so if you can't demonstrate it to right. a reasonable certainty, then just make sure your confidence level is proportional to what you can demonstrate. So 